Hi, I'm Sneha, and today I'm going to show you how to use Visual Studio's Connection Manager to connect to a Linux system. We'll go through how to set up an SSH server on the Linux system, how to connect to the Linux system using the Connection Manager, and how to address any common issues you may come across. For this video, I'm assuming that you already have Visual Studio configured for Linux development and that you have access to a Linux environment. If not, you can learn how to configure VS and easily set up a Linux system using Visual Studio's WSL acquisition experience by watching this video. I will be using an Ubuntu Linux distribution for which any bash commands shown will be tailored. So let's get right into it. First, you need to set up the SSH server on the Linux system. Install OpenSSH server by running sudo apt install openssh server. You'll have to enter your user account password for the first sudo command you run. Then, run sudo service ssh start to start the ssh server you just installed. Now that the ssh server is running on the Linux system, you can set up a connection to it using Visual Studio's Connection Manager. To find the Connection Manager, open the Tools menu and click Options. In the dialog that opens, navigate to the Connection Manager under Cross-Platform. Here you can see a list of existing connections if you have any. To add a connection to the Linux system, you just started the SSH server on, click the Add button on the top right corner to open the Connect to Remote System window. Let's go through all of the input fields. Hostname is the name or IP address of the Linux system. It can be found by running hostname-i on the Linux system. If your Linux machine is in a private network, this command will only return the private IP address. To get the public IP address, you can use a third-party endpoint and run curl ifconfig.me. Port references the port that the SSH service is running on. By default, OpenSSH servers are configured to run on port 22. However, if you want to confirm the port, it can be found by running this command on the Linux system. The default port can be changed by modifying the sshd config file. Edit this file using whichever text editor you prefer. I'll use vi to show how it can be done from bash. You can make sure that your edits are saved by running cat and then the same sshd file path to output the file contents. Username is the username associated with your user account on the Linux system. For authentication type, you can choose either password or private key. If you choose password, which is the default, then you'll see the password field where you need to enter the password corresponding to the username entered. Authenticating using a private key is more secure than using a password especially when used in conjunction with the passphrase. Visual Studio version 17.10 and later only support elliptic curve or EC keys in PEM format for now, although we do plan to support other encryption algorithms in the future. To create an EC key in PEM format, first navigate to where keys are usually stored on the Windows machine, then run this command with whatever you want to name the key. It will prompt you to create a passphrase associated with this key, which you can optionally leave empty. If you do enter a passphrase, it must be at least five characters long. You've now created a public and private key pair. The file ending in .pub is the public key. The file without the extension is the private key. The private key should stay on the Windows machine and be kept secret. The public key needs to be shared with the Linux system. In the same directory on your Windows machine, Run this command with the public key name you chose and the username and host name you entered in the connector remote system form. This creates an authorized keys file on the Linux path specified at the end of the command and copies the public key contents to it. You may be prompted to enter the password for your Linux user account. The first time you connect to a remote host that your local Windows computer doesn't recognize, you'll also be prompted to confirm that you're sure you want to connect. If you want to double check if the public key got copied over, on the Linux system you can navigate to the authorized key file path and run cat authorized underscore keys to output all the public keys stored in the file and make sure one matches the public key on the Windows machine. Run cat your key name and then dot pub on the Windows machine from the directory where the public key is stored for a comparison. Now that the public key has been added to the authorized keys of the Linux system, you're ready to fill out the rest of the connection fields with the private key information. Select the private key file using the file picker and enter its corresponding passphrase. For simple connection scenarios, you are now ready to connect. 
If your Linux machine relies on connecting to an intermediary SSH host before connecting to the desired Linux machine, then you'll need to check the Use Proxy Jump box and fill out the additional fields. Proxy Jump allows your SSH tunnel to go through one SSH host, the proxy, to connect to a target SSH host. When you select the checkbox, you'll notice that the same form as above is copied below, but with the proxy distinction. The proxy labeled fields are for the connection information of the proxy SSH host that's in between your machine and the target machine. The fields for the proxy can be filled out in the same manner the fields for the target were filled out. Now that you know all the various options, go ahead and hit connect. If you successfully connected, the dialog should disappear and a new connection should appear in this list. If you have a connection error, the error information will be displayed in an info bar up top and the relevant fields you should investigate will be highlighted. Let's go through the main errors and how to address them. One type of error is connectivity failure. This occurs because an initial ping to the Linux system failed. Ensure the hostname and port are entered correctly. If this doesn't resolve the error, check that the SSH server on the Linux system is still running. Windows may also be unable to connect to the specified port, so you can try to change the port the SSH server is running on. An authentication failure means that either the username or password were entered incorrectly. Double check the username entered is the same user running the SSH server on the Linux system and that the password is correct. If you get a private key failure, then Visual Studio is having trouble using the private key to authenticate the connection. Check that you've selected the correct private key file and that you've entered a passphrase if the private key requires one. If the passphrase and private key file are correct, then ensure the paired public key was properly added to the Linux system. Another type of private key failure is when the key format is incorrect. Remember that for now, Visual Studio 17.10 and later only support keys in PEM format that use the ECSSH algorithm. An unknown failure means that an exception occurred that resulted in Visual Studio failing to connect to the Linux system. The specific error message will be logged in the file shown in the info bar and should be used to debug the problem. If you want to set an existing connection to be the default remote SSH connection, then you can click the radio button under default. To edit a connection, select the connection and click the edit button. This will open the connect to remote system dialog with existing connection information filled out, except for the passwords and passphrases. You can verify that an existing connection is active by selecting the connection and clicking verify. If a failure is given, this means either the SSH server needs to be restarted or the connection configuration has changed somehow, such as the public key being deleted from the Linux system. An existing connection can be deleted by selecting it and clicking remove. If you open a Linux project, you'll see your newly added connection in the target machine selection dropdown. Congrats on learning how to use Visual Studio's connection manager. We use community feedback to continuously improve the Linux development workflow in Visual Studio so make sure to leave a comment about your experience with the Connection Manager. If you'd like to learn more about Linux development in Visual Studio, check out this playlist and take a look at the links down in the description. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the new Linux features upcoming in Visual Studio.